Welcome to Grand Prairie Update. I'm Don Johnson. And I'm Terry Briggs. Here's what's happening in your city. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. There's a new face on the Grand Prairie City Council. Jeff Copeland took the oath of office Tuesday to represent District 7 at large. Copeland defeated three other candidates during a special election on November 5th. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. It is an honor uh, to be in place. It's an honor to be on this city council, but to follow in Ruthie's footsteps. And I apologize for being emotional, but we loved her so much. And, and my commitment is, <clears throat> if I can do half as much as Ruthie did in twice the amount of time, then I'll be successful. <laughs> the council will get one more new member next month from District 3. Lila Thorne and Kurt Johnson are in a runoff on December 10th because they did not win a majority of votes in that special election. Early voting for the runoff is being held at Garner Elementary from November 25th through December 6th at various times. The polls will be open December 10th from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. A very special delivery made its way to the headquarters of Grand Prairie United Charities, courtesy of a group of young students from the city's Primrose School of Grand Peninsula. Tyler, can you carry this together? Yeah. For the third straight year, the four and five-year-olds from Primrose's pre-K2 class were sent as ambassadors to deliver bags and boxes full of canned good items collected by all of the students and teachers at the school. The food drive called Helping Hands lasted two weeks and was set up so the kids could make their donation to United Charities in time for Thanksgiving. I wanted to welcome you to Grand Prairie United Charities. My name is Miss Debbie. We are very grateful for your community service. One of the main goals of the program is to teach the kids the importance of giving back to their community at a very young age. This could mean the difference between a family not being fed or several families not being fed to those families being taken care of. I think it's a great gesture for the school to teach the children um, to reach out to the community and to give. It shows the kids where it goes within their own hometown and their own city and that there are people that maybe live next door that need the help. The kids from Primrose collected nearly 300 items for this year's donation. Grand Prairie will soon be turning mega trash into megawatts by creating electricity from methane gas at the landfill. Methane is created as buried trash breaks down and decomposes. Right now the landfill captures the methane with a series of wells and then burns off the gas. But that process is about to change. Three, two, one. Today, officials broke ground on a generating station that will convert the gas into electricity. The $3.4 million project is similar to this one in El Paso, Texas, and could power up to 4,000 homes. Terra Corporation will build and manage the station, paying the city royalties for the gas and then selling the electricity. So, you know, it's a win-win for us and the city because we as a developer uh, make a profit on the sale of the electricity and it's a win for the city because um, they make a profit on the selling of the gas um, and it's a win for the city of Grand Prairie and the state of Texas in general because we are displacing that much kilowatt for kilowatt um, of coal-based uh, um, fossil fuel generation with a renewable product. And it's, it's been a while uh, in the works. I, we've worked on it every minute of seven years that I know of, just uh, going out for bid and then seeing a project come unraveled with the economy and then really getting to bring it back online again. So it's the realization of, of a lot of people's work, you know, over, over a number of years time. Plans call for the generating station to be operating by the summer of 2014. Hello, ma'am. How are you doing? Do you have something in the back? I do now. The city commemorated America and Texas Recycles Days by hosting a free electronic waste recycling event. Citizens were able to unload old TVs, computer equipment and accessories, cell phones, and other unwanted electronics and small appliances. America Recycles Day was November 15th and Texas Recycles Day the 16th. Both are set aside to remind people about the importance of recycling and to promote the positive impact that recycling has on the environment and the economy. 
We saw a lot of analog television. I guess uh, a lot of the, the older citizens were, were reluctant to get rid of those television. They used the converter boxes. Now they're converting over to the uh, digital televisions. And we see a lot of those coming in. It's been going pretty good. Uh, we see an, an increase in the amount of people coming in each year. The cost for the e-waste recycling event is covered by the Keep Grand Prairie Beautiful Commission to promote the benefits of the city's clean company partnership with the Chamber of Commerce. Grand Prairie is getting ready to light up the holidays again at Joe Pool Lake. One, two, three. Workers are wrapping up preparations for the eighth edition of Prairie Lights. The Christmas extravaganza features more than four million lights set up along a two-mile drive-through path. There's also a walk-through light display along with a holiday village that includes a live musical show, photos with Santa, food and beverages. We have all new displays in the park. So if they saw Prairie Lights for the last two years, they've got to come on back because the, the uh, lands are different and all the displays are different in the drive-through. In addition, we have our uh, inside our holiday village tent. We have our live show, but this year it's brand new. It's called Holiday Happiness. It's a live singing and dancing review put on by the uh, Texas Family Musicals again, but this time it's a 20 minute show. Last year, Grogan says the event hosted more than 168,000 visitors. Prairie Lights opens Thanksgiving evening and continues every night through December 31st. For more information, go to prairielights.org or call 972-237-GLOW. That's it for this edition of Grand Prairie Update. Hope you can join us next time.